Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 90s one hit wonders. Where are they now? How bizarre! How bizarre! How bizarre! For this list, we're looking at what happened to musicians from the 1990s who struck gold with one song and then seemingly disappeared. Who's your favorite 90s one hit wonder? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Four Non Blondes, What's Up? Ironically, for a song called What's Up, those words are never spoken in the song. Four Non Blondes found a bit of success in the release of their second single in 1992. Topping out at number 14 on the US Billboard Hot 100, the band disappeared into oblivion, making fans wonder what's up with that. Into a crisis times when I'm lying in bed just to get it all out what's in my head. Lead singer Linda Perry went on to write and produce music for other artists. Shauna Hall went on tour with George Clinton, while Roger Rocha formed a new group called the Golden Hearts. Their bass player, Krista Hillhouse, left the music business entirely and went on to become a graphic artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Number 9. Len, Steal My Sunshine Like many one-hit wonders, you've probably never heard of Len. This Canadian duo featured brother and sister pair Mark and Sharon Costanzo, who released the earworm Steal My Sunshine in 1999. I was lying on the grass a Sunday morning of last week, indulging in my self-defeat. The song made the rounds on Canadian and American radio, and even earned the group a Juno nomination. Despite the popularity of the track, the band failed to break out into any real mainstream success beyond their one hit. I was flying on the bench, sliding the park across the street, L-A-T-E-R that week. That didn't stop them from making more music. They released another album in 2005 before breaking up in 2008, and then reformed to release It's Easy If You Try in 2012. The two have since parted ways, as Sharon now lives in the UK while Mark works as a producer. I know it's done for me if you still listen to Number 8. Deep Blue Something, Breakfast at Tiffany's Fun fact, the song Breakfast at Tiffany's was actually inspired by the Audrey Hepburn movie Roman Holiday, but they didn't like that as a song name. I could do some of the things I've always wanted to. Like what? Oh, you can't imagine. I'd I'd like to do just whatever I like the whole day long. Good thing, too, because when it hit the airwaves in 1995, it took off like a rocket. And I said, what about breakfast at Tiffany's? Reaching number five on the Billboard Hot 100, it was the only hit song for the group. Unable to reproduce its success, the band ran into some legal difficulties around both the song and their record label. They did eventually release another album in 2001 before taking a long hiatus. They've since released a new EP in 2015, which was made available via digital downloads. And I said, well, that's the one thing we got. Number 7. Joan Osborne, One of Us Imagine sitting in a coffee house and striking up a conversation with a fellow patron, only to find out they are God. Such was the subject of Joan Osborne's One of Us, released in 1995 on her debut album, Relish. God had a name, what would it be and would you call it to his face? A massive hit for Osborne, charting number one in several countries, the song helped earn her three Grammy nominations. Since then, she hasn't stopped making and producing music. Yeah, God is great. Yeah, yeah, God is good. Having released 10 albums since, she's performed at the Grand Ole Opry, produced several albums for the Holmes Brothers, and continues to collaborate and perform on a regular basis. Nothing has been able to surpass Relish, but that doesn't mean the past years haven't been accomplished ones. Just trying to make his way Number 6. Cisco, Thong Song 
If there's one thing we can say with absolute certainty, it's that no one could have predicted a song about skimpy underwear would be such a huge hit. And much like many of the other artists on this list, Cisco's big hit was not the end of his career at all. Having already been a part of Drew Hill since their beginning, Cisco continued to perform and release music with them, along with his own solo projects. He also branched out into acting, appearing in shows like Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Legends of Tomorrow. What's the thong song? Seriously? Number 5. Los del Rio, Macarena, Bayside Boys Mix. Thanks to an English-language remix of their original 1993 Spanish-language release, this 1996 tune has become a staple of many one-hit wonder lists around the globe. Having spent 14 weeks at number one on the Billboard Hot 100, the song and the accompanying dance cemented themselves into the minds of all Gen Xers. Los Del Rio's current discography shows several additional albums released with alternate versions of Macarena. But that's certainly not the limit of their musical footprint. They've released additional Latin music as recently as 2018, and even opened an Airbnb hosting guests where they were inspired to write their music. Number 4. The Verve – Bittersweet Symphony Often compared to Oasis, The Verve had already gone through a breakup, three EPs, and two full albums before striking gold. Bittersweet Symphony was the first single from their third album, Urban Hymns, and it certainly struck a chord with listeners. Having hit number two in the UK in 1997, the band went on tour, but conflicts within the group found them calling it quits two years later. Various solo projects were launched in the early aughts, only to find the band back together in 2007. Two was short-lived as they parted ways again in 2009. The former members are still active musicians through various other projects. Number 3. OMC – How Bizarre In the mid-90s, a group from Down Under found their catchy dance track transforming their musical careers. Brother Bella's in the back, sweet singers in the front. Down the freeway in the hot, hot sun. They were the first New Zealand band to hit number one on a U.S. Billboard chart and managed to sustain that success in their home country. But as quickly as it ignited, their career took a bizarre turn in 1998. Polyfuamana, the face of OMC, got into a legal dispute with his producer Alan Jansen regarding royalties from their music. It wasn't until 2005 that they reunited with a new single. Sadly, however, Wamana died on January 31, 2010, after losing a battle to a nerve disease similar to multiple sclerosis. How bizarre. How bizarre. How bizarre. Number 2. Sir Mix-a-Lot – Baby Got Back would have ever thought that singing about butts would become such a huge hit? The infamous song dropped in 1992, going double platinum and earning a Grammy in 1993 for Best Rap Solo Performance. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. Although that may have seemed like the pinnacle of Sir Mix-a-Lot's career, he's kept fairly busy in the years since. He released three additional albums between 1994 and 2003, and has continued to perform and release singles in the years since. What's up, Phoenix? What's up, Phoenix? Jump on it! Jump on it! Jump on it! He's also served as a producer on several other projects, hosted a radio show for two years, and had a few stints in television. Oh, and who could forget his role as spokesperson for Cards Against Humanity? Cards Against Humanity chose me to be the official spokesperson of the ASPAC. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Chumba Wumba – Tub Thumping One of the unfortunate side effects of being labeled a one-hit wonder is how the average person will never know the bigger story behind an artist. Chumba Wumba was together for 15 years before they got knocked down with their infamous single Tub Thumping. Formed in 1982, they had released eight albums before Tub Thumping had put them into the international spotlight. And yet, even after such a huge success, they continued to rally for their causes and released another eight albums before calling it quits in 2012. Since then, band members have continued on in other musical projects such as Interrobang and even the independent film company Dandy Films. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.